Inherited genetic disorders and disease continue to challenge the medical community. Welcome to another segment in our continuing series, Behind the Mystery, Rare and Genetic Diseases. Lysomal acid lipase deficiency, or LAL, affects the liver and is a condition which can be fatal. It's a disease impacting all age groups, including newborns. With us today, Dr. Olaf Bodemer, internationally renowned physician and metabolic geneticist. We're also joined this morning by a woman who is directly impacted by LAL deficiency. Mary Pruitt, a mother with her own poignant story on this debilitating disease. And then later on in the show, we'll be joined by a young woman currently dealing with LAL deficiency today. First of all, good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. And I want to say thank you so much for being here to share your story, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But doctor, I do want to start with you. What is LAL? LAL deficiency is a genetic um, inborn error of metabolism, particularly of fat metabolism. So there's an inherited problem uh, uh, in breaking down cholesterol and triglycerides. And as you said, it affects predominantly the liver, but also other organs. You know, it's interesting because when we talk about LAL and we say it's very rare, it's not rare when it happens to you, right? It's right. not rare when it happens to your family. And I know, Correct. Mary, that you've been personally affected by LAL. If yes. you wouldn't mind, I'd, I'd love for you to share your story with our audience and give them an idea of what you went through. My son, Gage, um, was diagnosed with the infant onset version of LAL deficiency when he was four months old. Mm -hmm. He actually became sick when he was five weeks old. Um, his belly was huge and hard, and we, you know, we just couldn't figure out why. Mm -hmm. Then he started vomiting and having massive diarrhea. He just wasn't developing normal. Um, so we took him to our family doctor who knew something wasn't quite right, but didn't know exactly what. So we were sent to our local hospital where we stayed for a week, ran lots of tests, and then we decided to move to a bigger regional hospital where they still didn't know what it was. So it took three solid months of nonstop testing, nonstop, you know, blood draws, nonstop worrying and waiting. Mm. And we finally received the diagnosis of LAL deficiency. Um, our doctor that diagnosed us actually told us not to go home and look it up on the internet which of course we did mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, as parents, you have to know what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. At the time, there was so little information. There was one paragraph anywhere that it, any of us could find. And basically it just said, this disease in infants is quickly fatal and they will die before age one. As a mother, what goes through your mind when you read that paragraph and you see that word fatal? I felt like I was looking at it out, like outside of my body. Oh my gosh. I felt like it was unreal, like I was watching a movie, a bad movie. I just couldn't, I couldn't accept it because even though he was sick, he was still laughing and smiling and, you know, everything. So my husband and I quickly decided we were going to do whatever it was that we could. Um, so our wonderful team of doctors decided to do a bone marrow transplant to try to replace the missing enzyme. So we moved ourselves to Nashville, Tennessee, where we were at the hospital there, and he, they very quickly started his bone marrow transplant. He smiled every day through chemo, every single day. There was one day out of his whole life that he did not smile, just because of all the, the medicine. His numbers were looking great. He looked healthy. He was starting to develop and do normal baby things, and we had every hope that somehow we were gonna beat this fatal disease, we were gonna do it. And three days before we were supposed to get released from the hospital and move back to Alabama, he developed complications from his transplant. And nine days later, he passed away. Wow, wow, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. I'm a parent too, and so mm -hmm. I know how difficult it is when something like that happens. Yeah. And you know, it's it's so great that you are sitting here talking to us about this. And I know for you, it's about educating yes, other people definitely. about what can happen in, in a situation like this. And thank you so much for sharing your story. Thanks. And when we come back, we'll meet a young woman who is coping with LAL deficiency. Don't go away. Be right back.
Welcome back, everybody. We are now joined by Brittany Bonifee, who, in addition to Mary's touching story, has her own personal perspective to share with us about LAL deficiency. Brittany, good to meet you this morning. Good to meet you, too. I am glad you're here. I, I'd like you to tell us where you are now with your LAL deficiency and, and how you're doing today. Sometimes I get really bad pains. Oh. Sometimes I get really drained, so tired, and very tired. How old are you? 18. How difficult is it to be dealing with LAL deficiency and be an 18-year-old girl with so much to look forward to? Sometimes I try to think of I don't, there's nothing wrong with me, so I mm. can get through my day. And sometimes there's just days where I'm like, what is going on? Like, why me? Sometimes I think. But I know there's really nothing I can do about it, so I just, like I said, try to get through my day thinking that there's nothing wrong with me so I can, like, wake up and have spend the rest of my life like healthy because eventually you know you will get through it and stick by your family because your family will always be there with you. We have a website. We have clinical trial information, doctor information. Most importantly, I think just from my aspect and maybe yours as well, is just knowing that you're not alone. Are the diagnostic methods for LAL improving, doctor? The diagnostic possibilities really have made great advances. So, for example, now you can diagnose LAL deficiency in a single drop mm. put on a filter card. There's a laboratory in, in Scotland, actually, uh, who, has done, who has recently published a new method. So I think that is definitely an advantage because now you can you know, draw the blood if you suspect LAL deficiency, and you can be certain that if it's LAL, uh, LAL deficiency, it will be diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much. I cannot thank, thank you thank enough you. for being here and sharing your stories. And also, Doctor, thank you for thank the you. great insight as well, okay? We appreciate all of you for being with us this morning. And if you'd like additional information on LAL and want to know all that's being done to control and develop treatments for this disease, please visit the website, Synergiva.com. That's Synergiva.com.